Well, again, everybody, welcome back to the Trick Podcast of Joy and Gozo TV on this beautiful Tuesday, July 6th. What two podcasts back to back? Come on, Trig. What are you inspiring us again? Come on now. Gozo Bell right there. Well, hopefully I will inspire you as I feel inspired. Plus, I had some coffee here at 5.30 p.m., so that always helps. Talking today about O Ye of Little Faith. O Ye of Little Faith. Not me. I have amazing faith. I am a faith. I'm a faith man. Well, not really. I'm not a faith man. I'm faithful and I love my faith, but having faith is different. How do you know? How do we know if we lack faith, if we are people of faith? Well, I think it's easy. For me, it's as simple as what do I tend to believe in when things aren't going my way? For me, I tend to believe and trust in myself. And I am not ashamed to say that, or of course I don't want that, but we have to be honest. I tend to trust in my own abilities, exactly what the Bible says not to do. Lean not, it says in the Bible, on your own understanding. And yet that is what I do for many reasons, although I want to grow in faith. Another way to know that you are not a person, a woman, a man of faith is when you talk to people of faith, they talk differently than you. I have a good friend of mine who is a man of faith. I don't know if he has a gift of faith or he simply just has greater faith than me, but he talks differently about challenges. He talks in the present. He talks with, it's done. You have a problem, God's going to take care of it. You need uh, money, God already provided. And these are people who aren't just blowing smoke. They really believe that God has already done it. They have faith in God. And I think another way to know is that you're not a, a woman or a man of faith is you're often embarrassed when God does provide. You're embarrassed because you didn't have the faith. You lacked faith. And then when God does a miracle, you think, wow, I really, I'm lacking faith. I'm not a man of faith. I'm not a person of faith. And that's what happened to me today, which kind of, kind of uh, encouraged me to do this podcast. I've been hemming and hawing about my church and things not going my way. And of course, God is doing amazing things. But again, I lack faith. Oh, ye of little faith. And then, especially this one family that I was just really sad about them leaving. And to my credit, I wasn't mad. I was just hurt. And I was... I was confused. When we, needed them, when we needed them the most, they left. That's what I was telling myself. But I can honestly say I wasn't mad. And then today I got a text from that same family saying, Pastor, we've rethought things and we're coming back. And I thought, wow. And they even said, is that okay with you? And I thought, well, what a privilege. And I said, of course. I love you. We love you here. And all is well. Come home. And so, of course, I thought, man, I am a man of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. So I began to read in the scriptures that passage that comes out of Matthew, I think it's 9. No, excuse me, it's nine. Matthew 8. It's the passage that most of us know where the winds and the sea are, are drowning the disciples. They're in this little boat in in the Sea of Galilee, the one they knew really well, but they were afraid. Even these experienced fishermen were afraid for their lives. And instead of them trusting God or being known for their faith or doing something about it, they were afraid. And they were blaming Jesus that he didn't care. <laughs> Sounds familiar, right? So, of course, the Lord, Matthew 8, he stands, rebukes the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And what did Jesus say to them? Well, what you expect, what you would expect him to say, why are you afraid, O oh, you of little faith? O oh, ye of little faith. O oh, David, why are you so afraid? Why are you so mad? Why are you so angry? Why are you so afraid that people are leaving, that I've left you, that 
your church is going to die, that you're a failure. Why are you so afraid? Oh, David, you of little faith. Oh, you, Mary. Oh, you, Jose. Oh, you, Karen. Oh, you, Peter and John. Why are you so afraid that you're not going to get that job? Oh, you of little faith. Why are you so afraid? Well, because the wind, because the sea, because the boat is small, because I'm going to die. Because what my eyes see is fear. But faith is, is greater than our own sin. And because we're not just having blind faith, we're putting our faith in a powerful God. He's greater than the storms of your life. And so I have a few commitments that I'm trying to make today. One is to learn more about what faith is. So I want to read to you more of these verses. I just did a quick search on the word faith. And a few verses really caught my eye. This is Matthew 6. This is all from the Sermon on the Mount. A lot of, a lot of I guess, God, Jesus kind of... Uh, Disciplining, you could say, kind of um, just calling out the lack of faith of his followers. So Matthew 6, he says, But if God so clothes, so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Then, this is in Matthew 8, when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel... Have I found such faith? So that's a positive example. So it is possible for you to have amazing faith. This man here in Matthew 8, I forget the story, but I think it was the man who believed that his daughter would be healed if Jesus just spoke the word. I believe that was the, uh, the story. Matthew 8. Matthew eight twenty six, And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? That's the one we just read about. The sea and the winds and the storm. Matthew 9, this is about healing a sick man. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. Matthew 9, later on that same passage, he says to a, a woman, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. So now we're talking about faith that you will be healed. The first one was about faith that he would calm the storms. The other one was that Jesus was commending, not rebuking. That was the word I was thinking of. He was commending this other man for his faith over his daughter's illness. This is another man who was ill. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it done to you. So they were healed of eyesight problems. A lot of faith here. A lot of these verses deal with faith when it comes to healing of physical problems. But I don't think that's the point. The point is that your faith has to be great. And to stop being you of little faith. Why did you doubt? This is, a, this is as clear as it gets. Matthew 14. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So we see here clearly that faith is doubting. You doubt God, that's called ye of little faith. And that's exactly what it is. It's doubting that God can do a miracle. It's doubting. James, James 1, I think it is, right? Or James 3, it says, Ask God for wisdom, but not as those who ask with doubt. Ask without doubting. So when I look at my church that is empty and I blame myself or I get mad at this and that, Am I looking to God and saying, Lord, I believe that you will do this? Or am I doubting? And I have to say, it's 50-50. Sometimes I wonder. I, said, I say, Lord, how are you going to do this? That's called doubt. When you say how, that's called doubt. When you think, oh, I can do this, that's called doubt. When you think, oh, no problem, I got this, that's doubt. When you're afraid, that's doubt. When you give in to the fear, to the illness, to the empty your empty checkbook, your empty wallet, that's doubt. Faith is, I believe that God will make me well. That's what it says here, right? Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. 
It was her faith that made her well. It was, it is your and my faith that will do miracles. We have to have faith. Like my friend who, who when I talk to him, he's always saying, I believe. And he'll, he'll tell me, Trig, I am a man of faith. I'm a man of great faith. And even his friends will say, you know, he is a man of great faith. I think people would say of me, he is a man of what? Little faith. They may say he's very gifted and talented and he's a hard worker, but they probably say he's a man of weak faith. I don't want to be that way, do you? Of course not. None of us want to be men of little faith, right? And yet, I'm in good company, right? The disciples. All of these amazing people that followed Jesus, that lived and saw him and walked with him, they doubted. So there's no shame in being human. But... Here's the key verse in Matthew 17. How much faith do we have to have? Well, you know the verse, right? Matthew 17. He said to them, okay, let me just do something really quick here. Okay, there we go. He says, because of your little faith. What? I thought that was a bad thing. No, this is a good thing. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed. A mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds in the world. So here, here he's going to con commend, not condemn, commend my little faith. What? There's hope for me and for you? Now, I can say, at least I can say that I do have little faith. I don't have great faith, but I have little faith. Yeah, like small f. I don't have big f faith, but I have little f faith. How big is your faith? Well, don't be embarrassed if your faith is small. And if your faith is great, then... Please pray for those of us whose faith is lacking because of the storms, because of illness, because of small churches, because of your paycheck or whatever it may be. Because of your little faith. Awesome. We're in. For truly, I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, wow, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible. Wait a minute. Nothing will be impossible for, for me, even if I have little tiny Little F faith? Yep. Man. You know why that is? It's because it's not about you and me. It's about a huge, amazing, powerful God. But it does require at least a dollar worth of faith. Maybe you don't have a million dollars or even a hundred dollars worth of faith. But even a dollar worth of faith can go a long way. Because you're putting your trust in a huge, amazing, powerful God. And if you have just a dollar of faith... You will say to this mountain, move, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. What is impossible right now for you and for me? For me, it's my church thriving once again. I know that it can happen. I believe I have small faith in myself, but I do have small faith in a big and powerful God, and he can use that. How big is your faith for whatever concerns you have? in your health, in your body, in your family, job, security, safety. You don't have to have huge faith. You just have to have a dollar worth of faith, and God will do the rest. Now, if you do have a million dollars worth of faith, or a thousand or a hundred, as I said, please pray and, and, and ask God to give the rest of us faith. It says here, nothing will be impossible for you. Wow. My prayer for you and me, is that we would recognize how powerful God is and that you don't have to have faith like those amazing men and women of faith that we all know. If we have little faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you and I can move mountains and nothing will be impossible for you. What do you want to do? What is the impossible dream that you have or that you did, you used to have? For me, it's to see my church thrive. That is still my dream. And to be in the middle of it, helping people get saved through music, media, and the gospel. God can do it, even with my small, insignificant faith. But because I'm trusting in a powerful God, nothing will be impossible for you and for me. Put your trust in the Lord, my dear friend. Put your faith, no matter how small or how amazing it is, in the Lord. And He We'll see you through it. Thank you so much for being here. If you'd like to contact me, please email me, trig at davidtrig.com or follow me on Instagram at davidtrig. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you next time.
Adiós. <risa>